Victorville, United States Penitentiary, California, a.k.a. Victimville. Somewhere inside these walls are two young white men who were once oxy gods. One even went by this name on social media. 36 months ago, Wyatt Pasick was driving a Ferrari and living in Newport Beach in a $5,500 apartment in one of California's most affluent cities. Today, he's serving a nearly 20-year prison term. 60 months ago, Aaron Shamo had millions in cash and was so busy with his operation, he hired ex-eBay employees to run his private shipping department. Today, he's serving a sentence of life, no parole. Two young white guys who were once at the forefront of the fentanyl game. They were two of the first big cases where fentanyl sourced in China was pressed into fake oxy pills and sold to unsuspecting customers. Wyatt Pasek, aka Oxygod, sold them in bulk to customers across the country, and Shamo sold them mostly in small batches over the dark web. Growing up in Phoenix, Aaron Shamo idolized Steve Jobs and Bill Gates, like a lot of other aspiring young entrepreneurs. He read books like Think and Grow Rich. He also stopped going to the Mormon church with his parents, and he got involved with smoking the reefers. Now, he had a buddy named Drew Crandall, and they got jobs at eBay after not making it in college. And when young Drew got fired and Shamo decided it was, quote, unfair that he still had to work, he quit. For money, the two started slanging their doctor-prescribed Adderall on the dark web, perhaps the Silk Road of Ross Ulbricht, who's also doing Life No Parole right now. Then they realized they could buy any kind of drug on the dark web, repackage it, and resell it. They used the U.S. Postal Service to ship and receive MDMA, magic mushrooms, date R drugs. They even once bought a brick of yayo straight from Peru. And yes, you can actually order and receive these substances and these large amounts if you meet the right people online. They paid their suburban friends a hundred bucks to have packages delivered to their addresses and not ask questions. So they were making money, but then they realized the real lick would be in manufacturing. So first they bought piles of alprozolam powder and a Xanax pill press and they started making their own Xanny bars. So now they're making real cash, but Drew Crandall's girlfriend found out what they were doing and confronted them, and she said she was going to leave them if she, he didn't stop, so the two of them got a one-way ticket to New Zealand, and Crandall said he was out of the game. But things were about to get even bigger for Aaron Shamo. Someone told him about Oxy, which was all the rage at the time. He could make a fake version using fentanyl, with a profit margin so high he could literally turn pennies into dollars. Now, by 2017, deaths from synthetic opioids had increased 800% to 28,000, dragging the U.S.'s overall life expectancy down for a third consecutive time uh, ever. So for the first time in modern uh, history outside of the Civil War, life expectancy in the United States went down from 2015 to 27, three years in a row, and a lot of it was attributable to overdoses from synthetic opioids, like the ones Aaron Shamo was selling. Quote, fentanyl will be the bubonic plague. Mike Vigil, former chief of international operations for the DEA. The DEA estimates three and a half million Americans misuse prescription painkillers compared to only 475,000 on the H. So that's 10 times more people exposed to fentanyl through pills than H. So Shamo's downfall started when a package was seized uh, heading into Utah from China. And by the time it, his downfall started, the feds estimated he had already made 458,000 fake oxy pills. One day at LAX, a suspicious customs agent flagged a box from Shanghai, China, pulled it off the belt, and looked inside. The agent found uh, 98.7 grams of fentanyl powder, which is enough to make 100,000 pills. 
So the agents looked for more packages making their way from China to Utah, and eventually one arrived, said an agent with Homeland Security Investigations who spoke on condition of anonymity to protect ongoing investigations. On November 8, 2016, postal inspectors seized a box en route from a port city in China known to law enforcement as a hub of fentanyl trafficking, and it was addressed to a guy named Sean Gigi, Shamo's runner. So agents went to Gigi's house with a search warrant. When questioned, Sean Gigi uh, said he thought that the hundreds of env envelopes he'd mailed on behalf of Aaron Shamo were just the same party drugs he himself took. Nope, it was fentanyl and lots of it. Young Sean Gigi quickly agreed to wear a wire while he picked up the daily packages from uh, Shamo's staff, which he did every day and put them in the mail. But instead of putting them in the mail that day, he took them to the feds. And uh, the packages just from that one day that Sean G Gigi turned in contained 34,828 fentanyl pills destined for 26 states. Four days later, Agents stood on Aaron Shamo's stoop just a few days before Thanksgiving 2016, shouted through a bullhorn, and broke down the door with a battering ram. Veteran agents said they never saw a haul this big. They took 74,000 pills uh, into, into, I guess, well, into possession right then, and there was stacks and stacks of cash in Shamo's house. Uh, they found 1.2 million right there not including some more they found in Bitcoin and different bags of cash and stuff with people like his parents and one of his uh, underlings in the business who he was paying $1 a pill to to mail, he had 800000 stashed. Now his old buddy Drew Crandall, who had been supposedly in New Zealand, retired. Well, as his money ran low, he had gotten back into the business and he would uh, I think process orders from him. But for some reason, as Crandall thought, even after Shamo got arrested, that uh, you know he was in the clear and him and his girlfriend showed up in Hawaii. They had told their family they were getting married. <clears throat> well, when they showed up in Hawaii, the feds were there waiting for him and Drew Crandall got brought in too. Drew Crandall and uh, Aaron Shamo's other ex-partners and packagers pleaded guilty and quickly agreed to testify against their old buddy and boss in the Fent game. A federal jury convicted Aaron Shamo of 12 counts, including continuing criminal enterprise, the kingpin statute that uh, is typically reserved for drug lords. It's the one that they hit El Chapo with and it carries a mandatory life sentence which is what Aaron Shamo got. Shamo's ring was big by 2016 standards, but the Fent trade has only grown more sophisticated since, and now the Mexican cartels themselves are lacing the H they send across the border with Fent before it even gets into the U.S., and they're pumping out fake pills by the millions. Now for the oxygod, Wyatt Pasek, Mr. Instagram. Pasek had gotten a taste for being the dope man early, his current case is the Oxygod's fourth drug case by the time he was only 23. Uh, this case began, as many federal cases supposedly do, with some random confidential source, a CS, who probably was somebody in trouble for something, maybe he got caught with pills, maybe it was something else, telling the FBI he knew about a giant pill-pressing operation in Newport Beach, California, down in the rich part of Orange County. Pasek, who was calling himself Oxygod on Instagram and building himself up as a social media influencer, claiming that he was an investor and outdoing most trap rappers with his photos of cars, guns, and above all, cash. The CS told the feds that Pasek at the moment had 100,000 pills to get rid of, and they were four bucks each if you bought 10,000 at a time, five bucks if he bought less, but there was a minimum buy of 5K, which was $20,000. He wouldn't see you if you weren't spending 20,000. He was sitting on over 400,000 in pills. It probably cost him less than 10 grand to make. At that time, Oxy30s were going for about 18 wholesale. So if you bought from him, you could easily triple your money. 
So you can see how much quicker you can get rich from Fent than from the real thing. And with the sources being shady labs on the dark web from China and now Mexico, it's difficult to stop the action. Though the feds have made uh, fentanyl one of their top priorities currently. So when the feds heard Pasek's name, they uh, looked into him. They found he had a $5,500 lease on his apartment. And now listen to this part close, because they do this. They looked at his tax returns. He probably didn't have any. Checked to see how wealthy his parents were. And when it was clear that the young oxy guy had no reasonable way to be paying for his rent, not to mention the Ferrari he owned and the other cars like Lambos he frequently showed himself with on the gram, uh, they prepared to get him. Eventually, they grabbed a bunch of outbound packages from Wyatt Pasek to customers around the country. Little Ziploc bags marked with 100 or 500, which were the number of blue little pills stamped with A215 that he was sending out, counterfeit oxy. Wyatt Pasek pled guilty, unlike Aaron Shamo, and unlike Aaron Shamo, he can at least dream of one day leaving USP Victorville, he got 17 and a half years. So the game has changed forever. Lots of people that would never have the chance to meet a traditional plug and wouldn't know what to do with it if they did are now making themselves millions of dollars. Though it appears the feds are getting an iron grasp on the dark web and the oxy gods. Or at least these are the stories we know. American dope. Subscribe, damn it.